All right, guys and gals, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Hope you had a fantastic day in the markets. But you know what I always say, right? We're only as good as our next trade setup. So let's get back to work. Let's prep those charts. We get a finally Friday trading session to get ready for for tomorrow. And as always, my name is Joseph. If you're here for the first time, and welcome back to our nightly newsletter. If you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me. I help traders find the best of the best entry setups using a very simple three-step strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job is a little bit different tonight. Tonight, my job is to help you find the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow, the best entry setups and exit targets for tomorrow. And most importantly, with tomorrow Friday's trading session, what are the biggest traps we want to avoid? And how do we capitalize on those traps for tomorrow? And I get a bunch to cover tonight on this video. Markets have been wild this week. All the charts are prepped up in the background, as you can see. We We've got some oil, some S&P, some NASDAQ, and of course, that yellow metal, the gold futures on the video for tonight. We'll grab the calendar for tomorrow. We get some news tomorrow morning. It's a Friday, so it's a big, you know, very important dynamic, right, whenever it comes to trading a Friday trading session. We'll talk about that on the calendar. Before we jump into the video, though, as always, if you're here for the first time right now, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I don't want you to miss this nightly newsletter every evening, Monday through Thursday, so make sure you hit that big subscribe button hit the bell icon so you always get notified every time we publish something new and don't forget if you have any questions any questions about the strategy membership anything we talk about tonight if you have any questions drop those questions down in the comment section below I'll be hanging out there after tonight right to make sure I get all those questions answered and if you like what you see tonight hit that thumbs up button I always appreciate you guys tuning in every evening to get ready for the following day with us but let's not delay though let's jump in we got a lot to cover here tonight I want to get you guys ready for Friday morning's trading session. Let's grab a look at the schedule here first. Let's take a look at what that finally Friday trading session looks like here for tomorrow. So obviously, you know, tomorrow's a Friday. Friday is, you know, classic Friday, early in, early out. You know, I always I always kind of tell my clients, you know, get to, you know, get to the markets early tomorrow, eight o'clock till ten thirty is probably gonna be your meat and potatoes for tomorrow. So eight AM, ten thirty, you know, you really gotta have a good reason to be trading after eleven o'clock on a Friday morning. And I realize that Fridays are oftentimes uh, you will get movement after eleven o'clock, but there's a very big difference between moving markets and trustworthy and reliable markets, what you got to remember is, is the only people who are trading at 11 o'clock are the rookies who don't know any better, right? And they're not going to be trading the way that we trade, right? And the, all, the, all the sharks, because the sharks come out when the volume drops late in the morning because they know there's a bunch of unsuspecting rookies hanging out there in the markets. One of the worst things I can do is try to dig myself out of a hole on a Friday afternoon or give back, right, the, the gains I've made this week on a Friday afternoon. So definitely, definitely be careful tomorrow as you get after 1030, 1045. And you know, I'll tell you, with such a busy, busy uh, week this week, the markets have been all over the place with this virus right in Asia. I wouldn't be surprised because of that. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of exhaustion tomorrow after that 1030, 1045. Now, Remember, at this point, this is all speculation at this point, right? We're going to come in like we do every morning, like clockwork, right? We're positive, optimistic. I always expect to have a great Friday, but I do anticipate that window of setups, reliable setups, will be smaller tomorrow morning in our trade room. Now, the good news is we do have some nice big news tomorrow at 945, the PMI composite flash. Anytime you see those three letters, PMI, you always know you're looking at markets like gold, currencies like the euro or the pound, right, or the Aussie. So we know those PMI numbers are really, really, uh, uh, they're, 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 they're market moving events. We do expect to see, right, some reaction to that. So knowing that 945 is our PMI composite flash tomorrow, I would expect probably the best setups to be sometime between 930 and 1030 tomorrow. Obviously, we'll be in our trade room at 8 o'clock like we always are. 
getting things updated, going over our rules, going through the patterns, making sure we're ready for those setups. I'm going to put together a good plan of attack for you guys tomorrow, right? No matter what time of the session you trade tomorrow. But tomorrow morning, 9.45 to 10.30, I'm really looking forward to taking a big chunk out of the market with our clients in the trade room tomorrow morning. So don't forget tomorrow, right? PMI number at 9.45. You know, we talked a little bit about this uh, this coronavirus, right? We, 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 we talked about this earlier this week. At this point, you know, looking at the headlines we're seeing right now, it's very clear the Chinese are doing a lot of preventative, you know, pre preventative maintenance, right? They've quarantined entire cities. They're breaking down, you know, public transportations. We've got we've got reports now as far as Scotland, Singapore. So we know it has been uh, it's kind of left mainland China. They're in, it's in Hong Kong now. So this weekend is going to be a, this this next 24 hours, right? Friday will obviously be a big day. Markets took a bounce as you saw today so it does look like the markets aren't too worried about this coronavirus but hey tomorrow is a brand new day that is really the only known unknown that we have going on right now you know they passed the brexit thing the impeachment stuff is not affecting the markets at all and uh, it looks like it's just this corona stuff right that is kind of lingering out there right so we'll see if we get any developments overnight obviously if we continue to see more developments in that coronavirus if it gets worse overnight it's bearish for oil it's bearish for the e-minis right a a a, a depressed uh, a travel state right will will be perceived at lower demand for oil right if we if if people start to believe that this virus will slow down the Chinese economy that will hit the Nasdaq and the S&P so definitely watch Watching this closely overnight at this point it is just a known unknown but that is something we are certainly watching as we go into friday's trading session we'll know more tomorrow morning that's for sure no matter what we get though tomorrow we'll definitely have a plan to put together for our clients in the trade room let's jump into some charts right now though let's grab some charts got some oil some s p some nasdaq and some gold right had some really nice moves on the markets here today let's jump first though over to the crude oil the black gold the texas tea the crude oil futures and what do we know about oil right now? Well, first of all, we know we have a bearish trend. I don't think it takes a, a very experienced technician to see this market is just a little bit bearish over the last couple of days. And again, this is, of course, right in response to the perceived lack of demand for oil because of the, again, the perceived threat that people may stop traveling right throughout Asia, which, of course, right was a big boon for the for the oil economy. So. It's one of the biggest reasons why oil has dropped like this. We're back to that $55 a barrel area we talked about in last night's newsletter. We knew that was a big level for us. I wasn't expecting it to go straight down like it did, but hey, we take what the market gives us. So we know we're bearish. And really at this point, it looks like the biggest clue we have on it is just this kind of higher low, these higher highs. And this looks like a flag. It looks like a flag. It smells like a flag. And whenever I see a flag, I, I have a couple real key setups I always look for when it comes to flags. Uh, flag patterns are almost like ranges. You'll notice that it's a channel, right? You'll notice this is a channel, obviously, but it's a very flat channel, right? It's not a very, you know, it's not like a steep channel, right? We'll see some of those here as we go, right? It's not like a steep channel. It's a relatively flat channel. And anytime you see a flat channel, this would be a flag pattern, right? As we run lower and then right running higher, it's not a reversal yet, right? We haven't reversed yet. We haven't seen enough momentum yet for the bulls. So we definitely don't want to be a buyer yet, at least not where we are right now. But, you know, again, I think of it as a range. And what do we do with a range? We buy low, we sell high, and we avoid the middle, right? So I want to, I want to sell above the highs. I want to buy above these lows. I've obviously got that bearish momentum. So being a seller is going to be a little bit easier, obviously, than being a buyer. So we'll have to make sure we plan on that. I think the biggest thing, though, is staying out of that middle, right? Staying away from the middle of that range because that's where things are going to get a little bit dicey here for tomorrow. I also do I also do want to talk about a short covering rally because let's you know let's let's 
let's face it, I'm sure a lot of this big move down was very much overdone because of the perception of this, uh, you know, threat of this virus to air travel and, you know, the demand of oil, right? So, I'll, you know, this could start to snap back, right, to areas overhead close to 58. I've got a big level overhead here up around 58. Now, obviously, it's a little bit early to call a reversal here right now. But, you know, I'll tell you, anytime we see a rising support trend like that, we always know there's potential that the bears may not want to sell into that rising support. And, you know, since we're so overextended, you know, overextended being a, a very relative term in this, right? Since we are so overextended, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if these bears said, you know what? We're, 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 the, the, the threat wasn't as, as big as we thought it was. We may have overshot this and let's rally back higher. You know, that may easily happen for tomorrow. So those are two big kind of scenarios I'm getting ready for here. How do we trade the flag? How do we trade the, 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 the reversal or the short covering rally? And really what it all breaks down to is this flag right now, right? The flag pattern. So I've got my trend line drawn above the lows. I've got my trend line drawn above the highs. And really the most important thing about a flag is you want to get, and this is a lot like the wedge that we talked about on gold last night, you really want to get outside the edges, okay? Outside the edges are where you're going to get the best entries on these types of, again, flag patterns. And really what happens is a lot of times you're going to get these markets, they'll make a nice big, let's leave that back on there for real quick here. We get these nice big moves up, right? There's my channel, obviously. We get these nice big moves up and people start to think this market is reversing, right? It hasn't reversed yet. And we'll talk about what a reversal will look like here in a moment. But because the market is so, you know, the, the, the momentum is rather bullish at this point. In, in, in my experience, the most reliable way to sell it is going to be use what I call a nested failure pattern, which basically means I'm giving the buyers two tries to buy the pullback. And if they can't do it two tries, right, I'll look to sell down into those trade right get back down into that flag now a lot of times what happens is we'll get a nested failure pattern into a pullback combination now this is where you just got to be a little bit careful here right because you don't want to take the pullback too far down right because remember you've got that trend line coming in and that's not a very nice trend line that trend line coming up off the low gets higher as we go so it's a it's a very unforgiving trend line so to speak right it'd be a whole lot different if this was lower lows right and we could sell up top we had all that space right that's a very forgiving trend line because it gets better for you as the time goes right if we have this rising support trend line right here i want to go up again up above that flag that's the key you want to get those buyers chasing it up there and again because it is so you know again it's perceived as being bullish i don't think it's bullish yet i do want to give those buyers one shot i want to give them two shots i'm looking for those two tries lower lows once i get the buyers loading up now i know exactly where those stops are and now I can sell it going back down into that range. The most important thing here, again, is going to be to make sure, right, my risk to reward ratio here is still within, you know, it still enables me to risk one to make two, risk one to make three, right, risk 10 to make 20. That's a very important part of flags, and that's why you've got to really try to get above that, that high. Right? You don't want to get too too far inside that range because you're dealing with, again, that very unforgiving trend line coming up. So that's my favorite way to sell off the top of a flag, right? So let's get back down to the bottom, though. How do we buy off the bottom? Well, we talk about this quite a bit on this newsletter. Uh, what's the best way to buy in a bear market? Yeah, as you can see, right, you're going to be you'll be buying against the trend in that situation. So the best way to buy it is, again, you want to get outside of that flag right get underneath that channel you don't want to be trying to mess around inside of it there's possibly a range down here for tomorrow get underneath the flag and then it's it's almost the same to a pattern but a little more conservative so again in this case we're very bearish okay we don't want to buy too aggressively here but if I can see these bears try once try twice and here's where there's a difference when I'm going against the trend I'm going to look for a trap low on this. I call this a crown reversal pattern. 
Um, it's kind of like a, a, a it's, it's very similar to a nested failure, which I would use off the high, but includes in a trap, right? Now, there are certain reasons to use nested failures. There are certain reasons to use what I call crown reversals, which is what I'm showing you here at these lows. And, uh, you know, we'll talk more about that in our video classes, which reminds me, by the way, right, if you want to get a much deeper dive into all of these patterns I talk about tonight, I'll put a link up here in the upper right-hand corner for you for our free trading course. I'm going to draw up on the charts here right now, but I've got hundreds of examples of how we apply these patterns to our favorite markets in my free trading course. So grab that link in the upper right-hand corner, right? Make sure you pause the video, grab that link, get registered. That way you can learn all of these patterns and you can make the most of our time together here every evening on the video. So those are two ways I'm watching to buy the low and sell the high. Now, I also want to be aware of what if we make a run, right? What if we run as we go? There are two patterns I'm watching for for that short covering rally. And I want you to really understand that a short covering rally, if I can type here, a short covering rally, the name says it all. What is it? It's a short covering rally. It's a rally that is not fueled by buyers. It's fueled by sellers the short covering sellers, right? This is an old school term. When you close out a short position, you are covering your short position, right? You'll buy to cover. It's a, it's an old school term. They're referred to as short covering rallies. And I want to make sure you understand that if a market runs higher here right now, it is probably 15% buyers and about 85%, I almost said 95%, by the way, 85%, glad I'm not a math teacher, that's a different channel, right? 85% sellers, right? So it's mostly sellers, okay? What's happening is, is the bears that have been short the last two and a half days, right? Yeah, they're gonna get out, right? And that's what fuels that move higher. Now, this is important. I'm not, I'm not just telling you this to, to, to show you off that I know the tech, but what, what's important to understand is, is that if we get this rally higher, if you're waiting for a deep, deep pullback, you're just probably not going to get it, okay? And that's the, that's the big thing. Remember, if the market rallies higher, it's probably rallying not, not on the back of buyers. Again, there'll be a little bit of buyers there, but the majority of them will be sellers. And this is important because while I would, while I would love to get a one, two, three breakout, right? Big, strong run up off this moving average, find that high, mark up that channel, right? And buy the low of that channel. This would be the ideal pattern going higher, right? That'd be the ideal pattern going higher. Call it a one, two, three reversal, right? One would be the strong move up we've seen. Two is the pull back to the EMA. Three is that strong jump, Okay, that gives you the actual reversal, then you want to buy the pullback. The question though is, will they give us that pullback? They may not. What usually happens in these short covering rallies, which is again why I mentioned the fact these are sellers involved, is as we rip higher here, what will happen is the buyers who are already in the market, they're going to see this as a gift and they're going to take some profit off. Then the bears are going to come in and they're going to slip their orders to sell right above that high. And usually what will happen is, is you'll see it run back down again, right? That's going to give you now effectively one try, two try. When you see that, now you know there are stops sitting right above that high. And I'm looking for a nice strong signal here to literally buy right into those stop losses. Now, the ideal pattern here would be with the trap involved. So we run up, right, pull back as profit taking higher high, trap low. You're not going to need a trap if this thing really runs like this. You may not get anywhere near a trap on this just because of the potential when those bears bail on this. But as long as we get the one and the two, we'll have the ability now, as soon as we get that second try, to buy right into those stop losses. And again, I'm anticipating now, as this market wants to run higher, there's so much open space overhead that it's it's very easy to see that this this whole move up from yesterday into, of course, being today, this could evaporate in, in a few hours. So it could, be, it could be a very good move going higher. So again, it's the one, two, three reversal into hidden channel pullback. We got the one, two, if they jump off it right now, I'm going to mark up that high, mark up that low and try to buy that pullback. But again, don't hold your breath on that because you may not get it. It's a one, it's a two, right? It's that two try. I call it a two try breakout. Again, wait for the strong run up, right? Profit taking once, 
bears try twice we're buying into those right into those stops ideally ideally it pulls back double bottoms or traps low those are almost guaranteed winners when you get those big runs up there we'll see what we get tomorrow but obviously that will be the short covering rally plan from there now one more thing you do want to be aware of is, aware of is if we do get that failure back into the range which is very much expected at this point uh, you know again a lot of this is kind of hanging on uh, whether or not this virus continues to spread and how the news media treats it you know unfortunately if the news media makes it sound like the world's coming to an end oil will probably roll over on us if they come out and kind of brush it under the rug uh, I would imagine we're going to see a probably a pretty good rally on the oil i'm just like you though i'm going to trade what the chart tells me right i just know there's a big elephant in the room right now that may come in and stomp on this market if things start getting restless so bottom line is if we do end up back into that range now watch out for that market sitting inside the range it looks like that's the range right there we really don't have a lot of information for it yet i'm kind of i'm kind of making an educated guess on it to be honest with you of that trading range but i'm looking at this now if we do break down in right again i'm still looking for that crown reversal to buy underneath it that's for sure but if we go back into that range now and sit for a while now we have a lot more opportunity now up inside this sell zone now, if I commit back into that range, what's my what's my favorite entry pattern when it comes to a range bound market? For a range bound market, we're bearish. I want to sell above the top of the range. My favorite way to sell it is going to be that buyer failure. I want to see us profit taking rally what happens is after the bears try a couple times to push it lower they're going to give up on that and the market will spike higher okay this is not a reversal but a lot of people in the market will think it's a reversal right i used to think it was a reversal i'm going to wait for buyers to commit to buy the pullback and i'll look to sell right into those failures now sometimes we get lucky and we get a beautiful failure into pullback combination so you might get lucky and get both of those patterns failure patterns and pullback patterns just remember again right stay out of the range right sell high don't sell inside the range right that's why our no trade zone is there and again i'm talking about my favorite setups for tomorrow if you want to see a lot more details of those setups or if you just want a much deeper dive into the entire trading strategy we use that way you can make you know the most of your time with me here tonight on this video newsletter the other the other uh, you know possibility is again the market rolls over and runs right if it rolls over and runs if we roll over one two three and run i mean we know what's up now marking those lows marking that high getting aggressive right we'll have to get aggressive on that if it makes that run lower so if we start seeing this thing just bail on this i'm looking for that short off the top of that channel i'm not going to want to sell it here you know there there won't be enough proof of that just yet right but i will look for that sell though once we get again that one two three breakout looking for that pull back to the high of that channel and then boy oh boy on that at, at that at, at that note now right where's the where's the next level down it's down at 53 53 is actually is a big cluster if you look left on some of the slower time frames right that should sound familiar to all you oil guys and gals out there 53 we spent a lot of time back in october september at 53 so 53 is the objective if this party keeps going lower 57 58 do i dare i say 60 if this thing snaps back We'll know more about this tomorrow for sure, right? Depending on how this outbreak continues. Oil is looking good. How am I doing so far, by the way? I know I'm going kind of quickly right now. I'm trying to cover as much as I can. You're busy. I'm busy. I want to make sure we get it all out of there, right? I want to make sure you guys know. How you doing so far, though? Any questions? If you have a question for me, drop the question in the comment section below. While you're down there, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button for me, too. Well, yeah, I love it when you guys hit that thumbs up button for me. Let's keep going here, though. S&P. How, what, what do we know about the S and P right now? We know we're bullish, right? See, this is what a, this is what a short covering rally looks like. Okay, what happens is the bears try, they fail, and they just give up on it, and the market runs higher here. Those are sellers walking away. Those are not buyers buying up there, right? Those are sellers walking away, not buyers, right? Again and again, I'm sure there are some buyers there, but mostly those are bears getting out of the way. So we know the market is bullish, right? You can easily see that one, two, three right reversal and of course we draw up right we draw up and of course towards the end of the morning it looks like they kind of ran out of out of gas so to speak here right as we go into the end of the day what else do we know here right now we also know this is what i would call a spike in channel 
Now, what does a spike in channel tell me? Spike in channels are really, really common. In fact, I would say, I would say, if you're a new trader, this is a top five chart pattern that you really have to learn. Uh, the most important thing about a spike in channel is, is the base of that channel, right? Look at the look, look at where the channel connects to the spike, right? There's two parts of it. There's the spike up, and there's a the channel. Right? That's why they call it a spike in channel. Pretty clever, huh? Now, the most important thing about this, it's not the actual, it's not, it's, the most important thing is, is the, the base of that channel. Because most of the time, the market will pull back right at the base of that channel. Okay? Oftentimes, this looks a reversal. Okay? So don't let it fool you. There's a good, is a, is a, is a one, of the, one of the biggest reasons why I like spike in channels is because when you get those deep pullbacks, you know it's probably not a reversal. It's going where? It's going back to the, to the base. Again, when I say base, right, it's right where the channel kind of runs into the spike, right? So right there, that's the base of that channel. And that's what makes up the top of that battle zone. Okay, so I know that's an area where I'm watching for tomorrow, right? Spiking channel, a very big clue. What else do we see here? Possibly the most important clue. Draw that trembling off those lows. You know me, I love hidden channels, right? I love, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm bullish and I want to be a buyer, I love to draw resistance trend lines and then bring those trend lines down underneath and find, I call them hidden channels, right? I've heard some folks call them negative channels or reverse channels or whatever, right? I just, after a long time of drawing channels the old school way, I kind of got creative with it a couple years ago and I, I, I've had such great, really remarkable results with these hidden channels, right? You guys probably have noticed them as well. So that's another very important factor on it. Also, too, this area right there. Okay, this area right there. This is a really important spot, 15 and a quarter. Okay, I want to talk about this because this is the, the mindset of the market is what's so important. Okay, let's go back in time and think. I want to show you why this level at 15 and a quarter is so valuable. Imagine now the, the bears have control. Right, the bears have control. They sell the pullback, right? They sell the pullback, so they're short from here. Okay, then the market goes against them, right? Mark goes against them. Now, a lot of professionals with their big, big accounts, they're not going to use a real tight stop, you know, like rookies would do, right? Rookies use a real tight stop, and that's why they know they can kind of push you around in the markets because you can't really defend yourself, right? It's true, okay? Well, if you were a professional with, you know, six, seven figures in your account, what you'll do is you won't leave your stop just hanging out up there. What you'll do is once you see the trade go against you, You'll grab your targets, and I learned this from a very big veteran trader of mine, a friend of mine many years ago. He said, Joe, when I, get, when, I, when I realize I'm wrong on a trade, I don't just get out. I take my targets, and I bring them up to my point of entry. And I thought, now, that's really smart. And then I started to realize it happens all the time. And what happens now is, imagine if you are a seller, what is this? This is a buy target down here. Right, it is right. It's a buy target. It gets you out of that short. Now, if you're a seller, and again, this is this, this, this is the big elephants right in the market, the ones that actually move these markets around. If your buy target was down at those lows, and then you move that buy target up here now, why? Because that was your point of entry, right? Now, why would you want to get out? Because you're wrong. Again, rather than taking the loss on a stop loss with a big account and a lot of experience, what they'll do is they'll take their buy targets and they'll move them up now. Right, so now there's a bunch of bottom, bottom line. There's a bunch of veterans out there that have their buy orders waiting right at that area. Now you can imagine why that's great for us, because now if we get that pullback, what's happening? Now you've got buyers buying the low of that channel. You've got buyers buying off reversal lines. You've got buyers buying the pullbacks right in the base of that spiking channel. Oh, and by the way, you've got sellers who are in the red now getting out. And how do they get out? They're buyers. So everybody becomes a buyer on this, right? Very, very important. It's one of the big reasons why reversal lines, right, which are basically prior swing highs, why reversal lines are so valuable for someone like me, because I know that when it pulls back, 
yeah, it's buyers buying there, but it's just as much sellers getting out of positions they know they're in on the wrong side of. And so we really look for that explosive area right there. So as you can see, I'm very, very happy if we can get a pullback back down to that low. So now we know where we want to be a buyer. Where are we trying to go to? Well, the S&P has to be a bit jealous of the NASDAQ right now because if you're watching the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's gone all the way back up to retest its high. That's exactly where the S&P wants to go. Okay, that's pretty easy to see, right? And by the way, how about that pendulum swing from yesterday? Oh my goodness. I'll tell you, these pendulum swings are always, they, they always surprise me. I, I, even to this day, I'm always amazed at how well, look at that, right? And they didn't even get the round number. They're like, pendulum swing, check please, and they're gone. What, what, what a great, what a great run. And then the reversal off the low, amazing stuff. Anyways, that's yesterday. Let's get ready for tomorrow. We know where they're trying to go. Right, we know where they're trying to go, so that's where our target is. We can get that pull back, right? We're trying to go up to that high. Got my measured move coming in overhead as well. So, all of these are easy, easy targets for us. Now, if I can get the pullback, let's talk about how we buy this thing as it pulls back. Um, you know, there's really three scenarios. This is very basic, obviously. Um, what if we go back, right? What if we go sideways? And what if we go higher, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reinvent the wheel here tonight, right? Up, down, and sideways. I know it's very basic, but those are the only three ways we need to be ready for. So first of all, let's look at that pullback, right? Down into that battle zone. Most often, what's gonna happen is, is that deep pullback will make the sellers in the market feel like, oh, we're going back down to retest that low. But we already know better, right, than playing that game. It's a bull market right now. So if I can get some sellers to commit off the EMA, I now know exactly where their pain points are. Now I know where their stops are. I can buy into those stops. I can wait to buy the pullback. Okay, again, I call this a failure into pullback combination. Okay, just so you know too, sometimes we don't get that pullback until later in the move. If we don't get the pullback, if it really rips higher here, look for a trap, a two-try trap pattern, right? So really the variable is we want the failure. The failure is kind of like the gimme, okay? The only question we have from there is do we get a pullback late in the game? And if we do get a pullback late in the move, you don't want to buy too high, so you want to use that trap. I call it a two-try trap pattern. Okay, or it may pull back right away for the simple pullback entry as we go back up to retest the high. And again, targets are back up at tomorrow's or or said so tomorrow tomorrow's. Very very uh, very confident. I see Joe uh, at, back at yesterday's right high there. So what else can we look for here? Um, it's a relatively deep pullback. So deep pullbacks always kind of remind me. Be aware we may see a two-legged pullback. Right? Two-legged pullbacks are relatively common when the range is wide like this. The key to a two-legged pullback is right. Right, draw the trend line down off that high, and remember you want to see some sunshine in between the trend line, right? You want to be able to see some daylight between the trend line and the price action, and of course, big signal candle coming off that moving average or off the trend line, and you're buying up from there. Again, we call this a 2LP. Right, short for two-legged pullback. I know I'm, I'm, very, I'm very clever, very clever in my in my, my 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 years here as traders. So we know we got a bull market. We're looking for a pullback. What if we don't get it? Right? What if we don't get it? What if the bears have already exited, but the buyers aren't quite sure yet? Right? And we go sideways here. What's the plan if we go sideways? Honestly, not much changes. I still have that reversal line. I still have all this area down here. Not a lot changes. What I don't want to do is, is trade the middle. Right? What do you do with the range? You buy low, you sell high, you avoid the middle. We're bullish. I want to buy low. My favorite way to buy low is to, again, as the buyers run out of bullets, Right? As the buyers try to buy and they run out of bullets, what's going to happen is, is the market will pull back. When it pulls back, the counter trend sellers will foolishly try to short this. I still am amazed how many counter trend traders cannot keep their fingers off the buttons. I'm happy they can't because it's one of the easiest setups that we have. I would love to incorporate this off the low of that channel down in the buy zone, right? It really doesn't matter. Just get underneath that range. One try for the bears. Get those bears trying to sell off the pullback and just and just buy right into their pain point, right into 
their stop losses. Again, the rookies who are taking those trades, they're not going to use big stop losses. You can literally nudge those stops, right, and run it right back up to retest the high, right? That's that. That's one of the big reasons why these types of setups work so well is because the people who are taking those counter trend breakouts, they're not professionals, right? They don't have big stops and deep pockets, right? These are small accounts. They're getting in too early. They're getting wrapped up in the emotions of it, and you can kind of nudge those stops, right, run them out, and make quick profit back up to retest those highs. Now, what if we keep going higher here? Uh, I think I think the biggest thing we know, the, the biggest clue we have right now is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is already back up to retest those highs right now. So the S&P may have some empathy or some sympathy moves for that. A strong move up. Now, in this case, if we see a strong move higher, it's a two-try trap. Why trap? Because you don't want to buy into the high day, right? You don't want to buy into that high at 37.5. My, my, you remember, remember, the go-to pattern when you're running out of space is a trap pattern, right? So you want two-try trap pattern. Again, bears try once, bears try twice, trap low. Okay, now if we just keep kind of grinding higher here, not a lot changes. We're still waiting for that pullback. We're still waiting for those counter trend sellers to wrap that noose around their neck so we can buy into those stops, buy the pullback for the combination, going back up to retest those highs. So there's really not much more we can do if it just keeps grinding right as we go. The other scenario which we'll be ready for is that move up into a range up here. Right, as it goes back and kind of finishes off the mission it's trying to accomplish right now. If we do sit here for a couple hours in a range, not a lot changes. We're looking to buy underneath that range, wait for those breakout pullback sellers to fail, and we're buying right back up to snap this thing back up to retest those highs. That is the definition of a short covering rally. Sellers getting stopped out, buyers taking it back up to retest those highs. Now, what is a what is a bear market look like, right? We might as well get ready for it. How do we sell this thing right now? Um, I'm not too keen. I'm not too keen on being a seller here just because the Nasdaq's already kind of shown its cards. I'd be very hesitant to try to call a top in this market right now. But if I do see a one, two, three reversal, right? So instead of instead of the bears failing off that low, right? If they do hold it on strength, now I can mark up that low, I can mark up that high, and I can try to sell off of that high. But there's one big problem here. Do you see it? Yeah, there's a big trend line in our way. Now that's gonna really be, that's not gonna be an easy, it's, it's not gonna be easy, let's put it that way. It's not gonna make our job very easy. So what's my go-to pattern whenever I'm worried about buying high or selling low? It's going to be a trap, right? It'll be a trap. And I know I'm sounding like a broken record right now, but repetition is what you want to be doing. Rep we, we don't use a lot of different things. We use the same thing over and over again. Once you master with me, right, you're free. You, it is the definition of being free. Okay, it's the best part about futures trading, right? With futures, we focus on a couple different markets, a couple different setups. It's not like stocks. We are chasing after all these, scanning after all these markets, all this manipulation. Oil, oil, S and P are fantastic futures markets. Bottom line is, though, if we do get that one, two, three reversal now, now I've got to get a trap here. Right? And how do we get a trap? One try for the bulls, two try for the bulls, trap high, and go from there. Okay? This is something that you will see. It's uncanny how they look for these traps. And again, you, you know you're looking for a trap set up because you've got a trend line here. Right? And so anytime we see a trend line, you know, you know that bears are not going to want to get too aggressive. Right? The rookies will take the first one because they won't be able to help themselves. The professionals are waiting right above that high to smack it right back down. Right when the rookies get stopped out of their shorts, the bears will come in above it and hit it again. And a lot of times that's the one that runs back down to retest that low. So again, wait for the reversal, then wait for a trap high. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. Okay, this is going to probably be one of the most difficult environments right there, unless, of course, it just slices through. And if it slices through, right, try to use that trend line, one try, two try, trap right off that trend line. Obviously, I'm kind of playing as many different angles as I can right now. I want you to be ready for this tomorrow, right, especially if you're not joining me tomorrow in the trade room. And again, 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow in the trade room. If you're not joining us tomorrow as a client, make sure you grab that free course I mentioned. It's linked up in the upper right-hand corner. And again, I'll put all the links 
in the description of this YouTube video. Don't forget, don't forget any questions. Drop those questions in the comment section below. Let's keep going here. How about some NASDAQ right now? Now, NASDAQ, right, this is, again, like I said, the S&P is probably a, a little bit uh, a little bit red with envy right now about the NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ, you can see here, we know we're bullish on the NASDAQ right now. What else do we know? We know we have this very strong move higher, right? So we're back up to retest that high now. We have to assume that is the objective, okay? It's very important to understand what that term means. Okay, when I say objective, you gotta remember, in a bull market, the buyers will keep buying until they reach their objective. In a bear market, the sellers will keep selling until they reach what? Their objective. Now, objective is very much, uh, it, it's very much based on the market's conditions, right? If we have a market that reverses off the high and snaps back, the objective is always to go back to retest the high. So the most common objectives are going to be a retest of the high, a retest of the low. If it's a if it's a if it's a trending day, it will be a channel rotation, right? That we're seeing right now. That's an objective. If it's a range bound day, it will be a range rotation. That would be the objective. So you always want to know where's the objective? Where are they trying to go? Right? Right now, we can safely assume they've reached their objective at that 94. Why is it important? Because now I know I can't buy up here, right? I'm way too high. I've got to buy with traps, deep pullbacks. I've got to get something off these highs because if I buy now, I'm buying where most sellers are likely getting out. Okay, big, big deal there. That will tell you what type of pattern work best for tomorrow. Now, I think the biggest clue here is that strong move up. Okay, that strong move higher tells me that we're probably going to get another leg. Right, so anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we're probably, you know, there's always an exception to every rule, but anytime we see a strong move up, you know, markets, real markets, liquid markets, they, they just don't turn, they just don't V bottom very, you know, V, v bottom, v, you know, V top very, very, very often. They do every once in a while. You know, every once in a while, there's some sensational move, right, that snaps right back, you know, some headlines come out, things like that. But most of the time, though, when you see a real strong move up like this, right, you're gonna see another leg. And really what, what, is, what is kind of uh, interesting on this one is, is since we're at the top of that range from yesterday, right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised here if nobody wants to take profit, right, but nobody wants to buy up here. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a range as we go. And this is what I said earlier on the S&P, right? If the S&P snaps back up, what the NASDAQ is doing right now, we may indeed see this thing go sideways here unless they can poke their head through it right up to what would really be at this point now these you know fresh all-time highs right so we don't have a lot to work with out there we'll have to work with right that 9280 measured move once 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 we get there we'll have to wait and wait and see what we get first so we know we have the big strong move up we know that big strong move up says stick to the buy side don't try to sell this thing just yet but focus on buying low because right at those retests of the high what else do we know right now hidden channel Right, love, love, love this hidden channel. Again, I like to draw my channels a little bit backwards, right? Draw off the highs here. Look at how well that fits off the low, right? That's a beautiful spot there. I'm gonna be buying on that pullback. You could easily incorporate that range, right? Buying underneath it, around that low as well. But you can also see, and I made this very easy to see here tonight, you can also see this trend line coming in, right? This is this is the real, this is the cat's pajamas for tomorrow. If this if this little thing will snap for me here, right? That is a beautiful, now this is what I would call a reversal line as well. This is kind of a sloped reversal line. It's just a trend line, right? That of course, we'll try to use that trend line as a level of support. I really like that trend line a lot. I like that trend line a lot. You can see that spike in channel was there earlier, right? We never get the pullback into the spike in channel. So no, no worries about that one. So we definitely have a bull market, strong bull run up, expect another leg, possible range up here because we're at that 54 high. I want to buy low. I want to buy the low of the channel. I want to, this darn thing won't snap to it. I want to buy that trend line. All right, so now we have a pretty good idea of what the plan here is. I think the, the, the hardest part here is going to be if we go into the range, right? So hopefully we'll get that nice deep pullback, get down into that buy zone, 
get that mo get that moving average coming over. And it'll look a lot like this, right? This is what it looks like a lot, right? We had a deep pullback. The bears come in. They try to right, try to sell it, and of course, once they fail, buyers are coming in and buying into those stop losses. That was kind of an ugly example there of how it of how it continued through lunch, right? Usually, though, when you get a nice deep pullback off that high down into those levels of support, the sellers will try to sell off of it. Like I said earlier, it always surprises me how many people try to pick these tops and bottoms by trading these pullbacks. Now we know exactly where their stops are. We can buy into those stops for a failure into pullback combination. Or like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times those bears, when they get when they get beat, they get they get out and the market runs back higher. If it runs back higher, think fast here and look for a trap. Okay, this is this is this is one of the big reasons why I go over all this every evening. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning at eight o'clock Eastern, we'll do it again with all of our clients. Because I'll tell you right now, when a market snaps up like that, if you're not mentally prepared for that, if you don't have a plan, you're gonna you're gonna be chasing after it, right? If you don't have a plan already put together for, okay, what if it does this? What if it does that? What? Right, that's what I'm doing here right now, all right? And I'm bringing you right along with me. Let me do every evening on this video. So let's snap higher here. Remember, you don't want to buy high. What's the what's the best pattern to avoid buying high? Trap patterns, right? Trap patterns. Those will be your best bet to avoid buying high there. Those are a couple different options to watch here for tomorrow on the pullback. Don't forget, keep your eyes open for a possible two legged pullback does it look like it'll be the case in this one if i had to guess right now usually two legged pullbacks are are better suited for wider channels just because it's so wide right that's usually what will happen is a wider channel we'll use those two legged pullbacks right because it is such a big move down but this one doesn't look that much i do want to get that pullback delta low of that channel again watch out for a range up here it's very difficult to anticipate the range right now, but we may see it form. If it does, one try, two try. We're simply buying into those stops of those counter trend breakout sellers. Um, what if we go higher here? Um, if we go higher here, they're really, you know, if, if we go higher, this thing doesn't exist, right? If we pull back, if we pull back, then I can use the measured move to formulate my final target there, right? But if we go higher here right now, the odds of us going into a range or the odds of us going into a spike in channel are pretty good, okay? So you know how to trade a spike in channel. You know how to trade a range now, right? If we do jump up, I would imagine it's gonna be a strong punch up. One try, two try, it is the all-time highs. I will look for a two try trap low to continue that move going higher. Uh, maybe we get lucky with a pull back and a one, two, three, you know, breakout here. You know what I mean? One, two, three, hold the pullback. Buyers break higher. If that's the case, mark the high, mark the trend line, find the hidden channel, and buy off that low. That would be the most reliable out of those two breakouts going higher here. I'm not sure if we'll get that, though, just because of the nature of all-time highs, right? All-time highs do tend to be a little bit emotional, right? They do tend to get a little bit ahead of themselves. So now we get a pretty good plan here. How do we reverse this thing, though? What's the reversal look like? Now, the good news is, is the S&P had that problem, right? The NASDAQ doesn't, okay? So the NASDAQ, if we can clear below this, below this, uh, this trend line, we'll be good to go. So the first thing is deep pullback. Let's go back in a little bit closer here, right? First thing will be, of course, strong pullback off the high. Moving average comes over. The bears will hold this now and make a run off the EMA, okay? This is, this is where I don't, I, I never want to try to try to pick that top to sell that pullback because again a lot of times that will fail and run right back up to retest the high but if i can get a one two three again one two three reversal in this case right i'm going to mark up that low mark up that trend line up to the high here now that's the secret right off the high now and now you've got that high of that channel and we're looking to sell off that high. Where's my target? Target's pretty easy, right? It's back down to retest those lows at that 91.52 area, back down to retest the lows there. So pretty good plan there. If we get the reversal, you know, again, don't try to pick a top on this right now, though it's a little too bullish picking that top. Uh, we may also see a good blow over here in the overnight. So be careful, right? Trying to fade this thing as it goes higher here. Last but not least here. Okay, so NASDAQ's good to go. And again, don't forget, if you guys want to get a much deeper dive into all these patterns, grab that free course. All the links are in the description of the video here tonight. 
And uh, last but not least, here on the on the bowl here on the on the gold, sorry, the the yellow metal. Uh, what do we know about gold right now? Gold, of course, is bullish. Right, a nice big bull move up there on the gold. Okay, but you'll notice there's one big, big clue on this, and that is the strong bear move down. Okay, notice that strong bear move down. Now, you know, being a bull is great, but if we see a strong move in one direction, what usually happens, we usually see another leg in the same direction. So I'm a little bit hesitant right now to be buying up here just because we just saw the buyers get rejected, right? They tried once, tried twice, and they failed. Uh, strong bear moved down. I would anticipate we're going to get another leg or at the very least, right, get stuck inside this, right, possible range here. So bottom line is I'm not too keen on being a buyer on this gold right now. Not yet, at least, just because of that big, strong push lower off the high. What else do we know right now? It does look like this market's going sideways. This is a little bit of a tricky one, right? We go up, we go down, we go up, we go down. It bounces off that low. That's that's double bottoms for me there. That'll be enough to call this a range. I'm going to take that trading range, as always. Take that trading range. What do we do with the range? We buy low, we sell high, we avoid the middle, right? I take that range. That helps me find my buy zone. That helps me find my sell zone. And now all I want to do is I want to sell high, I want to buy low, and I want to avoid the middle of that range. Now, obviously, it's a bull It's a bull bias, so being a buyer underneath this low will be a little more reliable. I can be a little more aggressive right on the buy side. I got to be more conservative, obviously, to be a seller off of that high. One more thing you can see on this is this channel. The channel line up off these highs here. In fact, you probably could do it all the way back from there, right? Mark up the highs, mark up the low. This is a very good example of how you always want to make sure your channels make sense, right? So instead of drawing the channel wider, you know, you could draw that channel much wider like that, but that wouldn't exactly be the correct channel because it wouldn't make sense, right? You want to make sure you have all the bounces, okay? So when I say channel rotation a lot in my videos, right? Bounce, bounce. Bounce, 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 right? We should come back down to that low and see buyers coming in again. So we want to be a buyer off the low of that channel, right? So channel is pretty good to me there. So how do we how do we play this, right? How do we play this? I want to buy low. I want to buy underneath that range. The range, in my opinion, is the is kind of the king or the queen of this chart right now. It's important to remember that anytime we see evidence of a range, the range really does take the precedence. So I want to make sure I'm buying low and selling high. Now again, stay out of the middle. So as we get choppy, choppy, choppy in the middle here, stay out of that middle. It'll be it'll be worth the wait here to get, you know, again, if we see sellers trying to sell, sell, right, sell, right, eventually they'll hopefully will push through it. And at that point now, now we look for that run lower, get those bears, right, get those bears trying to sell into it. It's a it's a seller failure into bullish pullback setup, right? That combination. Now remember, you don't want to take that pullback pattern inside the range. A lot of times what happens is, is this thing will run up into the range and you'll get that pullback inside the range. This is going to be, it's, you know, those are about 50-50 trades right there, right? You don't want to get too aggressive inside that range. You want to get it before it runs into that range, right? So grab it beforehand. That way you're getting in underneath that range, a failure into pullback combination. Now we may also see, right, if it just simply runs lower here, draw that trend line over, moving average now comes over, right? We may see that combination of a two-legged pullback along with that failure pattern. So we may see a double dip on that low there. And again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just simply drawing up some of the patterns I'm watching for tomorrow. You can get a much deeper dive for all of these patterns by grabbing that free course I keep mentioning in the description of this video. It's also, of course, linked up in the right-hand corner. So those are some options for us as we go lower. If we sit here and go sideways, just sit on hands, wait to get underneath it, wait for those bears to try and fail so we can buy up into that range again if we do go higher here how do I sell it right how do I sell it remember these these are the 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 most recent highs here not all-time highs right not even near the all-time highs right but very recent highs so if we do go higher here how do I sell above the range what's the best way to sell in a bull market it's a crown reversal right so one try for the bulls two try for the bulls again double top is the bare minimum trap high would be what I'm looking for and all we're doing is waiting for that move up, wait for the buyers to try once, wait for them to try twice, trap high. You, you can see that this is a very loaded pattern, 
right? It's it's not a it's not a simple pattern by any means. I, I think it's simple, but I've been doing it for a long time. Again, it's lower lows in price. That's the key. Lower low in price, and then trap high, right? For that, again, I call it a crown reversal to sell off of that high, right? Or we get that one, two, three breakout. Mark up that high. Mark up that low. We're buying the pullback right off that hidden channel or we rip higher here one try two try two try breakout pattern we've talked a lot about those here today as well as we go higher here on the gold though right where's my next level right where should i be paying attention to next the next big level up there is that 1600 right which could easily right drag that range from back there right earlier in the month there that could easily get this party really snapping higher here so i have no problem being a buyer as long as we can get one of those patterns right either a one two three breakout does not need to be that big by the way just want to make sure they hold that pull back to the moving average that's the key right hold the pull back to the moving average jump off the moving average so it tells you right it's a reversal or it's that strong rip higher one try two try and buying into those stops right and again you'll see a lot more examples of that in the free trading course and then of course right as we go lower how does the market reverse going lower well first of all where does it want to go it wants to go back down to retest those lows right from earlier on in the week here so we've got to get that one strong move down two they've got to hold the pullback and three, they've got to jump off that moving average, right? Got to be a lot of strength coming off the moving average. Mark the low, mark the trend line, find the hidden channel, right? And then sell off the top of that hidden channel. Remember, don't try to predict these reversals, especially when there's a range involved, right? We first have to get outside the range and show me you mean it. Right, because it's very, very likely to go down. They try to hold it, they fail, and it just slingshots right back up and retest those highs here. That's what I'm waiting for here tomorrow on the gold, waiting for a pullback. Stay out of the middle. We will obviously be keeping up with this coronavirus as we go into tomorrow morning's trading session. That I think is going to be a big, big variable on our radar right now. And as always, as I always remind you, you don't need to do this on your own every day. One of the easiest shortcuts I can offer you is to come look over my shoulder and do it with me every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, as an advanced member of our membership here at School of Trade. If you're on the website right now, grab the advanced course and get registered, right? Time will fly by. Tomorrow morning, we'll be here before you know it, so don't wait too long to get registered for tomorrow morning's trading session. If you're not right, if you're not quite ready yet to be a member, make sure you grab that free trading course I keep mentioning. It's part of our free trial. You'll get a free pass to our trade room, hundreds of examples of how we apply this strategy to our favorite markets. Again, I'll put all the links, the description of the YouTube video tonight. Don't be afraid to call that toll-free phone number. Don't be afraid to use that live support tool and as always if you have any questions comments concerns drop those in the comment section below make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel so you never miss another great video and boy oh boy what a great week it has been this week get some rest out there tonight come back and join us tomorrow bright and early if we don't see you guys tomorrow morning at the opening bell have a wonderful friday remember early in early out tomorrow stay patient for the best of the best setups and if we don't see you guys tomorrow morning we're we'll back here next time on next edition of our nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other here this weekend. And we'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.